Hello, skating fans. Thanks a lot for tuning in to the GSN show. With me today, Mitch Whitmore and Stephen Hardman, quite the crew. Today, we have a bunch of exciting news for you guys. We got some trials coming up. We have some past results. We got some unofficial world records and so much more. Thanks a lot for joining. Let's get down to business. Yeah, as Vic mentioned, we have Stephen Hartman with us. Stephen is the coach of the Midway Club. Uh, he went to a couple World Cups in his day. And Stephen was my assistant coach out in Salt Lake City with the fast team. But again, he's branched out on his own and uh, I think he's doing a great job so far. Let's see what he's got to say about the speed skating world. And as a bonus information, he was the Danish national team coach for a week. <laughs> one hour, true. one for PB. Hey, PB. Yes. That's what we live for. As you may have noticed, we are in Milwaukee. We have the Pettit Ice Skating Stadium right behind us. No better place to record this episode. And tomorrow starts the U.S. Speed Skating Team Time Trials. So we'll find out who gets the race for the United States of America. But that is not the only country having their trials in the next few days. Yeah, we actually have uh, Colombians are here. And then the Dutch trials coming up this weekend as well. We're going to hopefully live stream that. So guys, any predictions for this weekend? Uh, the easy prediction would be that Jordan will most likely win hmm. two or three events. That's a bold uh, call. Yeah, maybe a track record or two. Maybe a lowland world record again. Um, yeah, what'd you, th yeah, what'd you think? You were here for Jordan's 142.6? 142.8. 142.8, okay. Um, very good race. Uh, honestly didn't realize how fast it was until he had finished. Um, it was just a very well-executed, like, flat... 1500. He skates really well. He's really fast. Right. So we also heard that uh, Kjeld made some comments after Jordan's results that uh, basically Jordan races it like a sissy. What do you think about that? It must be tough getting beaten by a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. Uh, yeah, it's kind of odd that that would be the comments. I think he's just trying to play some, some head games. Maybe he's a little scared that Jordan's already skating this fast once again, but uh, I don't really see that any way you execute a race is uh, if it works. Than it's, another, yeah. but if you yeah. skate an overall fastest time, then who cares? If you're going so. fast, you're going fast. Right. Yeah, though for sure, I agree in that Jordan is obviously the big favorite. Like you said, two to three races, depending on how many he'll skate, <laughs> more yeah. or less. Yeah. And uh, yeah, besides that, I think there's there's definitely some strong favorites. We've seen some of them, like obviously Brittany Bow, she has a ton of medalist world records. Kimmy medal in just about any World Cup last year. Um, so I think those are names. Aaron is for sure going to be on the team in the 500. Aaron Jackson. No? Aaron Jackson, the Olympic champion. So uh, it's it's a strong team. Uh, the U.S. got a lot of spots, so it'll be pretty interesting following anyways. The Dutch trials, less predictable. Less predictable. Uh, man, they've, they've had some very interesting results, I feel like. Uh, Thomas Kroll, I feel like he does this every season. He starts off Mm -hmm. awfully slow but he's getting dangerously close to not making the team in the fall yes. at this point so maybe he needs to adjust his training plan just a little bit to be a little quicker now mm -hmm. uh, but hard to say when you know world championships is your your ultimate focus uh, so I think that's yeah. what it's got to be hard for a Dutch skater is that you almost all of them even the ones that win World Cups still have to be somewhat peaked for trials just to make sure to make it to the team yeah yeah and then, then it's what do you prioritize? Do you prioritize making sure that you make the team, or do you prioritize racing a really good World Cup season? Right, and I know talking to Irene Woost, we <clears throat> had heard previously that she put all her eggs into the basket of win at World Championships or win at the Olympics, mm -hmm. which obviously worked how many times for her? Um, <laughs> but More than anybody else. But she also was super close to not making teams, even at their Olympic trials, which was just one month before the Olympics, but then goes and, you know, smashes everybody at the game. Yeah. So, obviously, that method is working well. One person that I found very interesting is Joop, or Joop, Joop. Venomars, the son of Urban Venomars, a legendary skater that I believe broke world records, been a handful of Olympics for the Dutch. It's yes. pretty tough to make it there. His son skated a 108 08, Zero, I believe. Oh, yeah. Crazy fast. That was in a race where High Not a Spear, Kill Noise, Thomas Kroll were all racing, and he, he beat those guys. I think yeah. Kroll was like sixth or seventh, something like that, down the list. Yeah, I want to And Kill was, was like, not racing, so it is going to yeah. be a, yeah. a dogfight. But be obviously, Yoop's got pretty good genetics. His dad's a legendary skater over there, so. I like how they skate so 
identical. Like they're they oh have the God. same yes. technique, the yeah. same they do skate. quick rhythm. Very. Yeah. If you had a silhouette. Yeah. <laughs> of them side by side, it would be damn near the same. Yeah, it looks like he's out of the late '90s, early 2000s, <laughs> uh, just faster. <laughs> so hey, it's gonna be cool to watch. So we've got the. You were talking about the Portuguese trials. Portion, not a thing we've talked about before. I don't know if we've ever had that before. I believe it's trials and also Portuguese national championships. And I saw those, so I was like, oh, that's like a little gimmick. There's probably one person skating himself. They had, I believe, more, more than 15 for sure skaters racing in the Netherlands, and they were pretty good. Like, the winning time was by junior skater 151, which that's, that's it's really impressive because I didn't know that Portugal even had long track speed skaters. I mean, I don't think they did. Yeah. Um, so really nice to see that some of these countries that do have a lot of inline skaters coming around. And yeah, it's not a matter of like out. having enough skaters, it's just a matter of getting them on the ice, basically. And Speaking of inliners coming over, the, this kid from the Czech Republic, oh my God, 348 in his first 3,000 meter, with his arms on his back the entire race. Uh, I got, Turns included. <laughs> I got some info from Kalen Dobbin, and it, he said this kid is just uh, – Sky's the limit, so really exciting to see. Yeah, super name, good on inlines. I believe this is, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but Mitsodich Jilik. Yep, your guess is as good okay. as mine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, arms on his back the whole race. Uh, it sounds like in training he's done some really impressive lap times too. And uh, Kalen is thinking in the low 620s for his 5,000 meter, so that could be <laughs> really impressive. He's already first. qualified for the World Cup, so yeah. we're yeah. going to find out in a few weeks. Going with more trials results, we saw the Italian trials, and it seems like the most impressive, of course, was David Giotto at 616 in Insel. Also sounds like the ice isn't crazy fast there right now, so it seems like he's so following with good. his form from last season. Second fastest 5K in the world this year, yep. so coming into it pretty, uh, pretty fast. We also saw the Japanese trials, some very impressive results. Uh, Momoka Horikawa, I think, was our first initial reaction of Im <laughs> impressive skating. Yeah. Uh, 155, only one second behind Miho uh, in Nagano, and I That's feel wild. like she wasn't even talked about as a 3K yeah. skater, or as winning, a 1500 skater. Winning both the 3K, the 5K. Yeah, we saw her last year where she won a master, which was, I think we're mostly surprised that she was in a breakaway with Valerie Melte from Canada. She's a good, good skater. Yeah. I mean, she won Canadian trials just a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and she beat her in that master. But it uh, seems like she can do more than just masters. Yeah. And uh, on the men's side, we saw Tatsuya throw down a really, really fast one. Yeah. Steven, what do you think? It's one of my favorites. It's your boy. I'm stoked. Tatsuya is <laughs> my favorite 500-meter skater. Um, he seemingly has been in a, a bit of a slump for at least last season, a little bit the season prior, but he's back. The big boy is back. He's skating fast, and, yeah, I'm just hoping if he gets to uh, Salt Lake that he can hold an inner turn. Yeah, and we wanted to have Tetsuya as our skater highlight of the week because uh, I think he's probably Steven's favorite skater at the moment, um, and he's had quite an interesting career. He's had a 34-0 in Heron Vane, which was insane. Arguably the best race ever. Yeah, yeah was, one of the that's... most, like, out there races at mm -hmm. the time. And then he's also had some downs, right, at the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, was that the race where he fell off the line or slipped really bad? I he towed or slipped, like, three, four steps off the line. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, earlier that season, he fell and fell in a re-skate of... Uh, his right. initial 500 going into the first turn, he slipped and fell. Um, so, yeah, he's kind of up or down, but when he's on, he's on. But, yeah. I mean, 33-7-9 in Salt Lake. Like, he's, a, he's very impressive when he's – Yeah, he had that world record for a short period of time. Yep. You know, only to be beat by Pavel. But, uh, yeah, he's a real boomer bus skater, and it's so exciting to watch when he's cranking like that. Yeah. So it looks like a 34-4-0 in yes. Nagano. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's an exciting start to the season. So it is. It should be fun to watch a World Cups. Especially when they race in Nagano because there's been so many World Cups there that right. it's very easy to compare these times to, you know, the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and we also saw another great skater there, Seitari Ichinoe. He broke the track record in the 1500 meter. 
That is impressive. Because yeah. that is not an easy one to get. They had the Olympics. They had, I don't know, just over the last 10 years, maybe five World Cups there. Yep. And he broke that at a national competition, the 144 low, I think. So we'll see how that compares to Jordan's 142.8. But since we have Steven here, wanted to get his input on uh, some new races coming up this season. Mm-hmm. So we have the mixed gender relay. Um, Steven, what do you think about that? Um, I watched a mixed gender relay last se- last year. It's definitely a unique event. My opinion is that there are better events that could be added into the World Cup circuit to make it more appealing. Okay. Um, such as? I think uh, a maybe a, a points a limb or an elimination mass start, a, uh, a men's oh, 3K I, I think would be awesome. Maybe a, a shorter pack style mass start event that's more sprint based would be good. Um, but yeah, uh, to me it seems a little bit like uh, the ISU is uh, kind of grasping at straws trying to make up events. I pretty much agree. I, I mean... Stevens knows more about it because he went to the university games where he saw this. He was coaching there. So mm-hmm. you've seen it firsthand. To me, the idea of, like, a man, I imagine Lauren Debray, Jordan Stahl's coming out of a 22-something lap and then pushing a tiny girl into a turn. And then I could see a lot of people getting hurt here. Yeah. Um, but also, we can't really, like, we need to see it at a World Cup first. But I, I do agree there's a lot of races we know that work. I mean, kids do these mass start races all the time. Yep. It'll basically be a mass start, but just more exciting. Or a, or a 3K, it would be a cool thing where we could see middle distance and long distance skaters battle it out and do like wild yeah. lap times for it. Still short and intense, probably really close race also. Yeah, my thought on the 3K is that just the range of skaters that you would have competing in it would be fun. And then also the different styles that people would be racing in. You'd have it's a 1,500 <laughs> specialist trying to go out at high sixes, low sevens. You'd have more 5k specialists trying to hold flat races like yeah. it would just make for very fun yeah, races exactly. very fun yeah yeah speaking of the 3k uh ethan Seprin did set a track record here in milwaukee as well this last weekend mm-hmm. 340 um I, that track record has been broken many times by a lot Good. of skaters really trying mm-hmm. brian anson jonathan cook chad shawnee um, uh, Jordan out. actually had it too, so yeah. it's <laughs> shout been out to around. my athlete Sam Chamberlain. I'm giving Ethan uh, maybe a little bit of a draft on one of those laps. That one he, of the times he got him. One of the times he got him. <laughs> what I think is the most interesting about Ethan's track record is that he also raced a 3K just the week before in Salt Lake City, and this one was I think more than a second faster than yeah. Salt Lake City at altitude. That we assume is the fastest ring in the world. Mm-hmm. So Milwaukee is not bad, especially with a good tailwind. The good air pressure day, it can be fast. Yeah, I think there's a lot of other events that could be a better bet. Um, yeah, again, I stayed in speed skating because of the pack races on long track. Felt like horse racing, um, nice combo of short track and long track, essentially. Um, those were super exciting, um, and I've been pushing for that flying lap, so hopefully yeah. we can uh, – get that organized for Flying maybe lap, the Salt Lake I, World Cup. I do think it'll also be very fun, very uh, Formula One-esque. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so to cover our trivia from last week, Vic, what did we have? The country with the most official long track skating rinks is Norway. Despite the size of it, they have basically a rink per 100,000 people up there. 42 rinks across the country. Yeah, so our trivia question for the week is... Uh, which long track athletes have won both world sprint and world uh, all around championships during the course of their career? I'm not counting Jordan yet. Yeah. But he is working on it. Yes, he is seemingly working on doing both in the coming seasons. Uh, yeah, put up a nice 5K a few weeks ago, and uh, obviously a very good 1500 last week to. Uh, kind of solidify himself, I would say, as the favorite, despite having never skated a time, <laughs> which is awesome. Crazy. <laughs> he is going to be exciting to watch on the adults calendar, where you combine all distances and see how fast your PBs are. Mm-hmm. I feel like he could actually get that thing, just because he'll be so far at the, not just sprints, but middle distances. Yeah, you mm-hmm. think if he throws down a 33 in the 500 this year, potentially under 140 in the 1500, yeah. <laughs> he's got a pretty good lead on the current holder is Patrick Roast, and I don't know if he's going to need to go too fast in the 5 or 10K, but he's already shown a 623 in the 5K, 
um, and talking to Bob, his coach, that uh, he's been working on the 10K without giving it away too much <laughs> insider info. But, uh, yeah. yeah, he's definitely putting some 10K efforts out there. Yes. Good I, luck, Patrick. Yes, I've heard some 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 numbers of lap times and it should be interesting to watch when we get to all rounds. I really love that he's going for it at this point in his career. Um, I think now's the time to do it, and as he gets older, he can narrow the focus more and more if he needs to. But, um, you know, we haven't seen something probably this impressive uh, since Hyden. So mm. yeah. This be reminds crazy. me a lot of Shiny Davis, actually. He yep. did the same thing at a young age. I entered the sport of long track speed skating after that whole thing. So I only learned later when, like, knowing Shiny, like, that's the 500,000. 15 dude mm-hmm. that he has won worlds all rounds also and skated a 13 10 6 10 5k yeah. so uh, you know quite the some good, good, good footsteps but he is he's on it yeah and if you want some uh a little advantage you can see our top 10 male skaters of all time and there's actually quite a few in there that have both sprints and all arounds back before they had a world single distance championship so be sure to check that out for inside info now that we're talking about skaters that can do a little bit of everything the next one we cannot not mention angel dalman harman do you have any idea who that is no well that's why we're <laughs> going to talk about her yeah so angel dalman was first last year at junior worlds in the overall long and track long track <laughs> yes yeah so first place as a junior b which in and of itself is crazy um and apparently she is at the Short Track World Cup this season as well. That'll be super exciting to see uh, not just how good she can get, but what she decides to be good at, basically. Yeah, I, I've seen that she has already done some time trials on long track as well, but it seems like she's more focused on short track for this part of the year. Um, but I'm interested to see if she's skipping the second World Cup and going back to do the long track trials. What's going to happen? Kind of like a Irene Termore situation. But... Uh, She's already doing both World Cups, or at least at that level, and she's, again, a, I think she's a first-year A now. So we've got another Jordan Stoles or Tremors on our hand. From switching from sport to sport, there is also some news when it comes to switching from country to country. Mm-hmm. We got Elisa Veta Golubeva. She switched from Russia to Kazakhstan, which is pretty exciting, and she's been skating a 156 in Astana. So, um, I mean, we've known her for winning medals at the World Cups in the 15, the mass starts, the team shoot as well. And as we all know, the Russians can't skate right now, but she found a nice loophole there, and she is seemingly representing Kazakhstan this year. Right. I wouldn't be surprised to see more skaters also switching to Kazakhstan, since they, they also speak Russian, and it's, <laughs> it's right next door. By, yeah. So <laughs> uh, they're coached by Russian, uh, yeah. at least the sprint team is. So, yeah, that's uh, she's a good skater. Yeah, definitely. Kazakhstan's recruiting. So, Vic, we've also heard about some new changes to the mass start at World Cups. Yeah. There is no longer semifinals, which in a way could be nice because then we don't have to race two mass starts every time. Instead, they put it as an A and a B final, which also could be a little sad because it is going to be difficult making sure that we have the best skaters in the A final at every World Cup because if you skip one, you'll miss out on some World Cup points and then, you know, the A final consists of the 20 or 24 skaters with the most World Cup points as we go into that World Cup. So let's say some of the best skaters skip World Cup 1 or World Cup 2, they'll be in the B final or the B master for the third World Cup. So that's a little sad, but I assume this is from the ISU's point of view. They're trying to make more people skate the mass third. And we did see people like Connor Howe last year skate a 5K of 15 and a mass third all within 24 hours. And we could hope for Jordan to one day give this a shot. He would definitely be one of the best guys out there. And maybe this is ISU's attempt to, like, it's not a whole day thing. It is really just 16 laps. So they hope that we'll have more people in that A final. But we'll see how that goes. What do you guys think about it? I like the idea. If they're going to get rid of the qualifying round, I would like them to get rid of the preem laps. But um, I do think that in terms of making it more accessible for individuals that are racing other events at the World Cup, it's a good idea. Um, I know Joey's talked about the how difficult it was to – I think they did – Yeah, double TP. up on 15s, TPs, 1,000s yeah. all in the same weekend. Yeah, it's a – 
bit of a commitment to be doing two times 16 laps when mm-hmm. yeah many of the skaters in there are focused on 1500s or whatever other races on that day mm-hmm. um but yeah it's going to be a completely different setup you know yeah. the the hardest part i think of at least the men's mass start is the the qualifying round mm. the final is usually much much easier and also the qualifying rounds you get world cup points like it's a big difference right. between winning and doing getting fifth even in the semifinal, which i don't think makes so much sense yeah so it'll be interesting and hopefully it's not like sometimes in other distances there's really good skaters that are just kind of stuck in b group for a while yeah. mm-hmm. for one reason or another the point situation or if somebody gets dq'd they could be stuck in b group yeah. all season or a crash which you know, to me a lot is of just, unforeseen thing. yeah not not gonna be good the um, one thing i really fear the most is that i i am scared that this will help the stronger skating nations even more like it will create a big difference for smaller nationalities smaller countries and bigger countries in skating for two different reasons um, the first of them is that every World Cup up until this point, we've gone into each World Cup, all countries being even, and you have one skater from, from every country in each semifinal. Right. So there's no team skating unless both skaters make it onto the final. Mm-hmm. Whereas here we will see, most likely, a lot of teams that will have two skaters in the final and other teams that will have one or zero, where that, for the big countries, that will for sure send skaters to every World Cup, they could have a little advantage there. Another thing that we saw the ISU just do recently for the season is that they increased the times to qualify for the mass starts by 10 seconds for the men and the women. That It's confusing. Uh, it really doesn't make sense to me, and hopefully either that's a typo or <laughs> that's uh, you know some sort of a mistake. Mm-hmm. But it seems like it's going to alienate a lot of the smaller countries again. But that makes it... That's the odd part to me because they've been doing such yeah, a good job of trying to include more small yeah. countries, especially people from inlines. You know, there's so many that transfer over. They need their first introduction. And some are just not as good at time trial racing in comparison to how good they are in a pack. So mm-hmm. I don't really like that rule. Yeah. And again, hopefully it's just incorrect or it gets changed at some point. But yeah. um, I mean, from, yeah. from my own counting, we're going to miss up to 10 different nationalities or nations at right. the World Cups this year just because of that rule change. Um, I will admit that there's been times where I've been a little bothered by skaters not maybe having the, the level I feel like they should have and skating masters with them. Yep. But we also just separated into an A and a B. So I feel like that would be a natural way for them to enter a master that won't be as fast. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, it's a great point. Yeah, no, yeah. especially now with the A and Yeah, B that would make it a lot more... You would think yeah. that... <laughs> <laughs> have as many as you want and be, you know? Yeah. yeah. And the good skaters should rise to the top. Maybe you add more people that get elevated to A group um, mm. just to make sure that people are still able to move up. We did also have the first short track World Cup off the season in Canada where the favorites did pretty well. The Canadians won both the relays. We also had the, the <laughs> Lou brothers making their comeback to short track uh, <laughs> in a different skin suit. You know, we talked about that on the long track side, but. They're uh, no longer Hungarian. They're no longer Hungary. They are in China, and I think they're doing quite well. It seems like uh, one of them won the 500, and they also won one of the relays. Yeah. The Chinese might be right pretty stoked to have uh, <laughs> them on the team for the relays. Yeah, quite the upgrade. They've already got uh, the Chinese men already have some good skaters, but mm. the Lou brothers are uh, a couple of the best in the world, so they're... They're moving right up. We also saw some of the usual suspects, like we anticipated. Kristen Santos, uh, Hanna Desmet, and uh, a few others were Sandra good. Sandra Bonsabor took the 500 meter, yep. world record holder. That was expected as well. So we'll see what happens in World Cup 2 this coming weekend. Also in Canada. That's about it here for um, for the GSN News episode. Hope you guys want to share this with all your skater buddies. Hope you want to subscribe. Hope you want to leave a comment. Tell us everything we said that was not correct. And also give us just a heads up if, uh, if there's anything we should mention in the next episode. Thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.